All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome into today's edition of In the Game. I am your host, Hustle. Today, we're going to go over projects I think are fantastic buys on this dip. You might be seeing this thumbnail 20x potential. I think that there's plenty of 20x's to still be had in this market. And this dip is giving you a great opportunity. We're going to go over key project updates across the space. There's been some big partnerships, big collaborations, as well as the hottest narratives. Gaming, what bags to position yourself in when the gaming narrative starts running once more. AI, as well as a couple of real world asset plays. I know these are the three hottest narratives this cycle. We are going to give them to you here on this show. So without further ado, let's get in the game. As always, before we get started, guys, drop down, hit that like button and subscribe for more every single day here on In The Game and on Banter as well. Shout out to our sponsors down below. You know, we have Vulcan Forge, Ultra, Dreams Quest, Game Starter, Fun Tico, NordVPN, Moon Tropica, Reality Metaverse, X, uh, we have Xverse, and Pika Moon. So lots of sponsors, but all top quality sponsors down below in the link in the description. And like I said, help us out. We are trying to push for that 100K subscriber mark. And we can't get there without you guys smashing that subscribe button and, you know, letting us know in the comments all the alpha that you're getting from these shows. So let's just jump into the market directly. I mean, we see Bitcoin's been up and down. We got back up to 72 over the weekend. And then we see today we're at about 69. Um, you know, on the 30 days, we're down almost four and a half, five percent on Bitcoin. And look, this is normal, like bear market or bull market dips happen. And we're kind of in the midst of that beginning, if not middle stages of the bull run, right? We're teetering around old all-time highs. We've we've gotten through those all-time highs. We've hit those 70,000 levels, et cetera. And if we look at this year chart here, I mean, I don't really see what the panic is about. A lot of people on your timeline are probably selling a lot. They're telling you to take profits. And look, I always advise to take profits throughout the cycle of the market, especially when your bags pump 5, 10, 20X, that you need to be taking profits. But is this the time to sell everything that you own in your crypto portfolio? I personally don't think so. I think that we have a long way to go after the halving and heading into the election. I think it can get crazy this fall uh, with the amount of potential printing, with the market stimulus that they're going to inevitably do. They're going to prop up the stock market. They're going to prop up markets. And now Bitcoin is a traditional route with the ETF. I see nothing but bullish momentum coming over the next six months or so, in my opinion. There might be a little bit of a sideways trading tra trajectory right after the halving. But otherwise, I, I see green in our future. Uh, and I think everyone in crypto sees green, right? We love the green. But I always keep it elementary. From the very bottoms of the market to where we are now, you need to be scaling out when the market's just overly euphoric and green. But at the same time, you need to be buying those dips when the market is red. Simply buy the red, scale and sell the green and, and be smart. Like if your bag only pumps 10%, you know, I wouldn't be taking profits. But when my bags multiply, scale out your initials, scale out a little bit of that. And then you have liquidity for the next play, also protecting your downside. So we're going to go over altcoins today that I think are great accumulations on this dip. There are some that are holding pretty strong. Uh, Moon Tropica is showing a lot of strength. They're one of our sponsors here on the channel. Um, shout out to Moon Tropica. Champs is showing a lot of strength at a 7 mil market cap holding that 0.007 level. We have Wilder World as well, still teetering around that $1 mark. And I have to say, uh, just the developments don't stop with Wilder World recently. They've partnered up with NVIDIA, Celestia, Polygon, Superverse. They have their Midnight in Miami experience going live here very soon. They're going to be doing a lot of competitions. They held a $20,000 competition over in New York this last week. And now they're partnering up with Samsung. Very, very bullish as far as the Wilder World token. This is one we've been talking about since 30 cents last summer. A lot of people doubted this one, but I, I do think Wilder World has a long way to go from here. And I think a few dollars, you know, three bucks is a realistic target here. In the midterm, I would say, not in the short term. It's going to take a little bit. There's going to be take profit levels over the time, people who got in early. But I think a few dollars is definitely inevitable for this token. And then another one linking up with Samsung, one of the fan favorites out there. 
uh, we have Illuvium. So Illuvium is bridging the digital and physical world here with their partnership with Illuvium. So this is going to be pretty cool to see Samsung's involvement in Web3 gaming. I think that's going to be just an interesting development to take a look at. We have Gunzilla, one of our favorite upcoming projects. And to be honest, the project that I think could set off the gaming market once again, they're collaborating with OpenSea, which now OpenSea is not that popular as far as market share goes you know magic eden blur these marketplaces are really w wiping the floor with open sea at this moment in time as far as the uh volume percentages but what's the key here the reason i bring this up they're only the ninth blockchain to be supported by this nft marketplace so this is going to be built with the gunzilla blockchain which is why it makes me bullish on this. So there's going to be a lot of network activity, a lot of trading assets going within the ecosystem, and they're officially linking up with OpenSea to utilize the Avalanche subnet that is Guns blockchain. So that definitely makes me very, very bullish. And rest assured, all the in the gamers, we love the Citus and the Senate token here, and you guys know that. So let's go filter by market cap. Let's go find Citus. First of all, I do think Citus is a good buy here, right around 100 million. I think there's 10x left in this token very easily. I think we hit a billion dollar circulating market cap this cycle. 10 cents would not surprise me in the long term here with Citus. And when I say long term, I'm saying within the next six to 12 months. When I say midterm, I'm saying three to six months. But with Citus, I think that this one's a great buy currently. But more importantly, I think Senate is just still so undervalued. It's one-tenth of the market cap. It's a $12 million circulating market cap. And pay attention here. I've mentioned over time that there will be more utility. There will be more integrations coming with the Senate token. The Senate token will be listed on new exchanges very, very soon. So that could bring more liquidity and just more volume, just more interest in general to the Senate token here. And I think... If we look at a comparison, I just want to do a quick case study here for you. Let's go take a look at the Star Atlas token. So we see Atlas at 100 million, 250 fully diluted. This is similar to the Citus token in this ecosystem, okay? But the Senate token would be Polis. And as we see here, Polis is a $100 million market cap. It's much closer in value to the Atlas token. And that's where I see a, a little too big of a gap. I, I genuinely think those should be closer together. So bullish on Citus, and I'm also bullish on Senate, especially with more exchange listings coming through the door. We'll navigate back to the watch list here. We have Creo. Uh, Creo, about a 30-something million dollar market cap currently. Let's go find this quickly. Yeah, Creo Engine, $35 million market cap. One of my favorite low cap projects in the gaming landscape. You know, they're one of the incubators slash game launchers that have some of our other favorite projects like Katana Inu launched on their platform. Uh, 36 million. I think at this price, this is dirt cheap as far as this goes. I think this could legitimately 10 to 25X from here this cycle. And when we look, it's now tradable on Ethereum. This is big. I know a lot of people don't like using ETH, all that good stuff, but the liquidity is on Ethereum. And it was tradable on Binance Smart Chain. Now this is tradable on ETH, where I think it could get a lot more liquidity and attention, similarly to Senate, right? When Senate gets on more centralized exchanges, people can trade it a little easier. Same thing here. It's a little more accessible being on ETH rather than Binance Smart Chain. We have Altura, which is moving into their next stage of their questing programs. Guys, go jump into these quests. This is how you can earn free uh, Altura. You can earn free prizes. You can get different rewards. You can play games and just earn off of that at the same time. And I got to say, there's some creators in there. You'll want to like, like, you're able to collaborate with, participate alongside. It's a really cool program. And if we go find Altura, yeah, I mean, I, one of the biggest value dips out there in the market right now. I mean, this was up to nine cents just last month. You're now getting it at six cents. It's 5.9 cents at the moment in time. $40 million market cap. I think this one is an absolute steal in the market at this point in time. And let's just recap on gaming. So um, other than that, I think Honeyland, we had Corey on the show on, I think that would have been Monday. 
Um, Corey was on the show. They gave us all the different updates in their ecosystem, really bullish on what they're doing over at Honeyland. One of my favorite buys in the market right now is Game GPT, AI and gaming. We've seen what happened with Prime and with AI Arena, which we'll talk about in just a second. I think this one at a $30 million market cap is a no-brainer. We have Crown, which is down 20% this week. This one is this is a buy heading into the Kentucky Derby. I think there's no doubt about it. And um, just looking through the market, I think there's lots on the gaming side that you could be scooping. And in general, the gaming tokens are just so beaten down, not getting the liquidity. A lot of them are holding their floor very nicely. Like the strength on some of these tokens is actually impressive. But right now, the liquidity isn't in gaming. But what you need to do is position yourself before that liquidity comes back. Um, a couple others, I think playable games, they have a lot going on. The, the, the market cap's getting so cheap here. Uh, I just think that this is eventually going to rocket back up, especially when the avalanche narrative does come back around. Otherwise, like, yeah, there's just so many cheap accumulations in the market right now on the gaming side that I think it's it's the time to be scooping up those dips. Now let's go into the AI side. So on AI, you know, I called this one out last week. Why AI? I think this one is a, a one to two dollar token in in the mid in short to midterm that's trading at forty cents currently. This got up to sixty eight cents, and we saw a lot of profit taking here. I think this one's still very undervalued and very early. It's fully diluted. It's a brand new token. And they have their AMA session actually starting like in the next hour or two. So I'm going to be tuning in there, hearing everything that they have coming across in the ecosystem for YAI. And I think this could cause a little bit of bullish momentum as long as they don't fumble that AMA and, and say something wrong or something like that. So I'm very bullish on that. Bullish on Blender. Blender, I think, is undervalued as it gets. Alongside a GPU, an OPSEC, these are the strongest mid-cap projects, in my opinion, when it comes to the AI sector. They're testing out their Blender Box X1s. So this is interesting. They're plug-and-play device designed to make hosting a Blender node simpler than ever. So I don't know. Let me know. Do I need to buy a blender box and run my nose uh, in house? I think that, that would be interesting, but I, you know, I will have to take a look. But you know, the hardware uh, technology that they're building, and you know, fully docs team, I, I'm really bullish. This is an absolute gem in the AI space, alongside YAI and BAI. I think that those are no brainer plays in the AI market in that mid to low cap sector. And then let's get into some new stuff. You guys love new tokens. So I'm going to give you new tokens. Uh, I think that when you look across the market, real world assets are one of the hottest in the space. And Mantra Ohm here, I think we'll be trading at a few billion here in the midterm. Absolutely no question about it. Um, a lot of real world asset projects I'm looking at haven't really launched yet. This is the one that's in the market, Mantra Chain, that I am most bullish on. Tokenized RWAs. BlackRock's doing the exact same thing. They're heading into the RWA space. I think Ohm is a very comparable project and superior project to most of the stuff in the market currently. It's almost fully diluted. The trading volume is super impressive here. And I think that as far as real world asset goes, this is one of the best tokens currently in the market. So this is my laser focus in the real world asset sector. But let me give you some early alpha. Soon you will be able to farm lingo coins on your timeline. We've seen the successes from this, from Portal to Block Games. We've seen Mojo. We've seen uh, a lot of different social farming initiatives. This one here for real world assets is one you cannot fade. It's gamified RWA reward token for the next billion in Web3. This is my absolute top real world asset project coming to market over the next six months. Hands down, I, I'm going to be farming this. I'm going to be getting in on it. This is one I think you should have on your radar, Lingo Coins on Twitter. So that is the early alpha here on today's show. And then let's delve into the meme coin sector. Look, there you. 
while I'm so bullish on gaming and that is exactly what my focus is on and I'm going to take advantage of that narrative going forward, all of my early investments, 90% of my portfolio is in the gaming space. There's four, and I talked about it last week at the end of the week, there are four narratives that can send you to Valhalla this cycle. Gaming, AI, real world assets, and meme coins. Okay, and that's where we are right now. I've gone over the first three. So here's my cheat sheet for meme coins currently. I hit Pepe at a 55X. There's been a few other ones, you know, did a few multiples, DGen trading over on Photon, on Solana, all that good stuff. But as far as long-term, there's not a lot I would hold, right? But personally speaking, I'm highly convicted in a select few, and we're going to go over those. I like spreading among different blockchains. That's my strategy because across the chains, there are different narratives that just pop. And there seems to be a mover advantage whenever Aptos, AVAX, ETH, BASE, BLAST, whatever gets hot, that's where the liquidity goes. And then those meme coins at the top of the chain there are benefactors of that. And they see really good price action, great liquidity, and really just astronomical pumps at that point in time. So I have different bets across different chains. On base, my number one bet is absolutely Brett. And you might be wondering like, okay, but you know, Brett is, and I'm going to do some comparison sake here. So Pepe is number 46 by market cap. It's $3 billion. Um, we have, let's go to Doge, which is $28 billion. Right now, I think Brett is by far the top meme coin on base. It's at 600 million, not cheap. You know, it's not cheap, but as far as it's 5X undervalued Pepe, it's, what would it be? 10, 30X undervalued Dogecoin. I mean, this still has a lot of upside. And when you're betting on base, when the normies come through the door, I think that Brett is still a very solid, low downside, high upside meme play. And let's be honest. I wouldn't be just diamond handing a $7 million market cap meme coin, right? So the memes that I'm looking at are more established, but still have high upside. So Brett with Roost and Normie coming in behind it. I think Normie's a sleeper, to be honest. I think that the Normie chain base is, is going to probably have this one pumped. And base is my favorite narrative for meme coins, I have to say, because of the amount of regular Normie liquidity that's going to come through the door. We have Blast. It's Pac-Moon, no doubt about it. Pac Moon is the best meme on Blast. There's no second. Uh, Solana. This is this is the Degen one in my in my holding currently. Costco hot dog. Laugh all you want. Costco hot dogs are a dollar fifty in real life, and Costco hot dog is trading at like eight cents right now. So you do the math there, and and if this gets to a dollar fifty, it's right around a billion. So that is a Degen bet. Do not run to the exchanges, but. That is one that I, I do have a little bit of a bag on, on my phantom wallet. And I'm going to see if, what we can do with that. Uh, runner up would be whiff, but it's already such at a high valuation. I don't hold whiff personally. Uh, cock Inu, you know, funny enough. I think that that one's going to do really well on Avalanche. And then Aptos on Aptos. Those are the main meme coins that I have my eye on. But how about a sleeper chain? This one's launching in the next two days. It's called Foxy. It's on Linea. Starts at like a 6 million market cap. And this is the official mascot of Linea, right? Foxy is the mascot to Linea. First ever culture coin built to reward the community. So personal and how do you, you know, the following, they've, they've done a really good job on the social engagement, questing, they're doing an airdrop. So this is one that's coming out on a new chain, Linea. And I think that Foxy could do really, really well when it comes to the meme narrative on Linea. And look, the appetite for new tokens hasn't stopped. We had the Games GG token launched yesterday, $20 million market cap, $200 million fully diluted. Overall, early investors are up, I think, like 6, 7x as far as that goes. So very successful launch there. People are desiring these new token launches. Planet Mojo was like a $700 million market cap on launch. So congratulations to those two teams. Just continuing to prove... We've seen it over and over in this market. From Portal, Entangle, we had uh, Pixels. We had, yeah, we had Pixels. <coughs> Pardon me. We had Pixels. We had Mavia. We had all these different tokens launch and show that like 
the taste, the flavor, the appetite for these brand new tokens and products is very, very high. And we still have more to come to market just this week. Tomorrow on the 11th, we have Easy, which is the gamified marketplace over on Blast. This one launches tomorrow. I expect this one to launch at a few hundred million, if not a billion dollar market cap. I would not be surprised. We have Block Games launching tomorrow as well on OKX. This one, I mean, I would be surprised if this is anything less than a billion dollar market cap personally. So we have Block Games launching here on April 11th. As well, we have upcoming launches from My Pet Hooligans token, the Carrot token, and Metalcore's MCG token, which you can actually jump in here and do quests and potentially earn and claim MCG tokens at the TGE. So get to farming from April 9th to May 14th on Metalcore. You can jump in here and start farming this. And then you can also do the social fi aspect for AI Arena. So th there's so much alpha in this show. I mean, we're giving you the whole layout of how to play this market right now by stacking up gaming, AI, real world assets, taking a stab or two at a different, uh, couple different meme coins across different chains, but also what tokens to look ahead for, the liquidity, where it's going to be shifting, as well as things you can go farm and airdrop and earn for absolutely free. Right. And as Insightful says, he's one of the best airdrop farmers out there, in my opinion. I would definitely follow him, info under ins underscore insightful. Um, for those that participated in Mavia and Pixelmon task, it was very rewarding and there was literally zero capital cost. This is uh, AI Arena has been building for years. TGE is coming in the next month. This is one of the easiest to jump into. Get on that TGE points leaderboard, refer people, do social quests. This one's going to do really well as far as that AI and gaming crossover. And then let's jump into our sponsors here to close out the show. We have Ultra, which we've covered the roadmap in the past, but I just want to reiterate, there's so much going on in this ecosystem currently. Um, as they say, there's going to be more content, user journey enhancement, innovative ecosystem expansions, evolving Ultra Arena, and tokenomics revamp and staking. That's really what I'm looking forward to as far as the UOS token as someone who's been a long time convicted holder and, and just investor of Ultra. I'm really excited for that. And then just seeing the exclusive sports game, Project Citadel come to market, all very exciting developments. And I think it's going to do really well for the Ultra token. And then they just partnered up with another one of our sponsors, Xverse. So big shout out to Xverse, anticipated free to play shooter crafted by industry veterans. Uh, this will be available exclusively on Ultra for the Xverse community and Ultra unique holders. So very cool collaboration between two of our sponsors here. We have Game Starter, which I think everyone focuses on Game Starter when in reality their ecosystem is much like more diverse. There is the launch pad, there's the game launcher, there's the marketplace. But they have their own in-house battle royale game here called Overtrip, which th this token will be coming to market soon. It's called Trip. This game, I mean, I, I first of all, I've had the pleasure to play this. Very fun product. And when you look at the graphics, it, it, it gives like a little bit of Fortnite vibe. I have to say the map is actually really nice. The, the movement, the gunplay, all that good stuff. I actually really had a good time playing this game. And I think that people sleep on the fact that Game Starter is an all-around studio ecosystem. So big shout out to our sponsors over at GameStarter. We have Moon Tropica, one of the hottest gaming tokens in the entire market, partnering up with ZK Hive. Uh, their success in saving millions of dollars from malicious attacks, it will continue to evolve and expand, poised to play a crucial role in fortifying the security of digital assets, and they're bringing peace of mind to the community, uh, as that is their ticker. I love that play on words there. Moon Tropica, they keep on bringing quality partnerships. They've linked up with Beam. They've linked up with some of the biggest ecosystems across the space, now bringing enhanced security to the table. I'm very bullish on Moon Tropica, even where it is and how many Xs that it's done in the market currently. And last but not least, we're announcing our giveaway winner for a couple weeks ago for the Cozy Penguin NFT with Funtico. First call to action, link down below, go to Funtico, sign up for the whitelist for their upcoming tournament. I think you will not be disappointed. They're giving away a pudgy penguin and more. So sign up down below. But Paul Bitra, Paul Berta, 
Sakel, I, I don't want to botch your name. I, I hate when I mispronounce people's names. It's like one of those respect things. So, uh, Paul, if you're watching this, Bartimaeus76 on Twitter, you are the winner of this giveaway. So we will reach out to you, whether it's Fun Tico or someone on our side. And we will, I think it will be Fun Tico, but just wanted to shout you out. You won this Cozy Penguin NFT, and we will make sure that is arranged. I think on the giveaway tab, they'll just arrange it automatically, actually. So big shout out to Paul. Thank you so much for the support and entering the giveaway, and congratulations as well. So guys, that's it for today's show. I just kind of wanted to go over the hottest narratives that I think I'm focused on this market. Like gaming is my number one. 90% of my portfolio is in gaming. Do not get me wrong. But at the same time, I'm stacking a few AIs. I'm stacking a few real world asset projects. I have some meme coin plays on the side with liquidity that look on meme coins, you got to be willing to lose everything you put into it at the same time, right? So I'm not degening into anything that's going to just completely come out from under me. But at the same time, I'm looking for good upside with low risk on the downside. There's so many rugs that come to the market every single day. If you're trying to snipe new launches, I'm going to get in on the established ones on chains that are dominant that I think have big time narratives in the future. And I think if you invest in gaming, AI, real world assets, meme coins, that is your pathway to unlocking the wealth that everyone talks about in crypto, which we refer to as gen wealth. And this is never financial advice, but I'm laying out my strategies, things that I'm doing in this market and projects that I'm laser focused on and very bullish on throughout this cycle. So guys, like the video down below, subscribe to the channel, help us to get up to 100,000 subscribers. I'll be back on Friday as always. Play well, my friends.